Hello everyone, we're diving into something you can actually try with your existing Quen Image Edit workflows to create consistent AI character with different outfit. Giving your AI character to appear with different outfit rather than just stuck with the same look all the time. For your AI character, there's this new LoRa Virtual Try-On model. It's based on the Quen Image Edit. If you've watched my previous video, you might already be familiar with Quen Image Edit. I did a full tutorial on the basic setup, so feel free to check that out if you need a refresher. This new try-on Laura specifically trained for virtual clothing, try-ons on characters. It is still in a very early experimental stage for this Laura, but I think this is a good move. It's a high demand topic, especially in e-commerce. The advertisers that I work with, they're constantly asking for virtual try-on solutions, not just for clothes, but also for product placement and display, like for ad creatives or product detailed pages. They really need these in-context editing AI model to generate their visuals quickly and efficiently. And honestly, I can see this being useful for AI video too. Think about it. When you train an AI character, you usually have a data set with few different outfits. But what if you want to reuse that same character in a completely different video? Kind of like an actor moving from one movie to another. Well, Actors don't wear the same outfit in every film, right? So the ability to virtually try on new clothes makes total sense. This kind of tool can be applied across so many industries where AI is being used. So let's jump in and see how to run this LoRa model. First, head over to the Hugging Face repo. It's called Try On LoRa Alpha. This is where you'll find the LoRa model files. Once you're in the Files tab, just download the Try On Quen Edit LoRa Sav Tensor file and drop it into your LoRa folder in Comfy UI. This model is built for Comfy UI, and good news, they've even included example workflows in JSON format right at the top, so you can download those and start playing around with the Try On LoRa that works with the Quen Image Edit model. As you scroll down the page, you can see they've trained it for multiple garment try-on tasks, but there are some limitations right now. It might not recognize super complex clothing items if your input image is too busy. And the text prompts? They're actually really simple because it uses an image merge format. Take a look at these examples. Even though the person looks a little squished compared to the original, the model still works. It places each clothing item at the bottom of the canvas, identifies them separately, and then puts them on the character in the right spots, so the output image uses just those text prompts. And in most cases, that's all you need to run the model successfully. Now, over in Comfy UI, they've provided example workflows broken into clear sections. You can see exactly how to set up your inputs. First, you'll input your garment sections, like a t-shirt, pants, and shoes. Just plug in whatever images you have. Then, select your character image in the image input. Basically, the workflow stitches all the garment images into one canvas and feeds that into the Quen image input. Also, pay attention to the image resize node. This LoRa was trained with specific dimensions, so sticking to the default size helps. You can tweak it later if you want, but I'll stick with the defaults for now. Now, for image generation, it's actually pretty simple because it's using an in-context diffusion model, which in this case is Quen image edit. The idea is straightforward. You input the image you want to edit, and the model knows exactly what to modify. So here's the main Quen image model, and this is where we load the try on LoRa. After connecting both the diffusion model and the LoRa, we move to the model sampling flow. The shift value is set to 3 by default, same as the original Quen image edit workflow. I wouldn't change that unless you're experimenting. Just stick with the defaults for now. I've also cloned the text prompt nodes, one for a male character and one for a female. We'll test both cases with different prompts in this workflow. Let's start with the first example. I've got three garments as input. For the character, I've tested a few images before. And here's a tip. Simpler backgrounds work better. In this case, I removed the background and added a white one. I threw in a node to crop the character and remove the background entirely. Why? because a clean white background makes it way easier for the AI to identify the character as the main subject. If your image has complex poses or busy backgrounds, the AI might struggle to recognize the character properly. Just like in most virtual try-on tools, a clean setup gives the best results. So I'm putting these three items on the character. 
The text prompts I'm using are straight from the Hugging Face repo. I haven't changed them at all. And here's the result. So far, it's doing okay. It's identifying the objects, like the pants here, about 70 to 80% accurate to the reference. The brown pants should be a bit looser though, not so slim fit. And the texture, it's still lacking detail, especially on the gray shirt. Some of the fabric texture isn't translating well from the input image. Same with the hat. The logo doesn't come through clearly. I'll admit, I'm kind of picky when it comes to e-commerce stuff. It's easy for me to spot what works and what doesn't. But honestly, this is a solid concept and a great starting point for virtual try-on using in-context models like Quen Image Edit. Maybe down the line, we'll see something like Flux Context Models doing this too. Alright, let's try another example, this time with a female character. I'll switch the connections, update the image input and output, and change the conditions to female. Here's the second example with the female character. And cool thing, it's not just clothes. You can also try accessories like a necklace or sunglasses. The model places them in the right positions on the character. The in-context system does a decent job transferring items accurately. But again, some details are missing. Like the necklace, it's hard to see the actual pattern. Let's pull them side by side. The pattern isn't clear at all. I think this highlights one of the limitations they mentioned. Items like necklaces or sunglasses might need more specialized training data. For niche or detailed products you want to showcase on a fashion model, you'll probably need extra training. But for general clothing, it's covering about 80 to 90% of styles pretty well, close enough in terms of similarity. Now, let's try it a different way. What if I don't remove the background? Let's test with another image. This one has more going on in the background, plus a handbag on the person. We'll try a different outfit, maybe a dress this time, skip the necklace, and add a hat. Let's say we go with this one. The model can usually handle two or three items, plus the character. That's four objects in one generation. Here's one of the examples. You can see it struggles when there's extra stuff on the character. It kind of identifies a hat, but the shape and texture aren't accurate. Probably because the Laura wasn't trained on complex scenes like this. For basic t-shirts and pants? It handles those fine, but more complex poses aren't handled well yet. In some cases, though, even with simple poses and different angles, the AI still recognizes the character and the objects. The composition works. The shirt still needs a little polish, but that's expected. You might want to try different seed numbers and generate a few times until you get a result that looks right. That's how virtual try-on usually works. It's rarely perfect on the first try. You often need a few generations to get something close to the real item. Still, this is a great start. This Laura model is lightweight and doesn't need a complicated setup. Back in the day, with stable diffusion or even flux, you'd need masking, IP adapters, or tools like Redux to combine multiple models just to pull this off. This result? It looks good, especially if you don't need the exact pose. If you just want a demo, it's about 80% accurate. But if you need the character to match the reference pose exactly, not quite there yet. I'd say this Laura isn't ready for that. From what I can tell, it was trained on images with plain backgrounds and all the characters are standing straight, facing the camera at 12 o'clock, so it works best under those conditions. But it's not going to perfectly replicate complex or dynamic poses from your reference image. Still, I think models like this, Loris designed for specific tasks on top of a base image model, are a great direction. Instead of just style transfer or single item Loris, we're seeing smaller task specific models, just a few hundred megabytes, that can do a lot. This shows how flexible Loris can be when used for practical tasks like virtual try on. All right, that's it for this video. It's cool to see how far image diffusion models have come. Right now, I'd treat this Laura more as an experimental research project. For production level quality, it'll need more training and better output refinement. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great day. See ya.